Kingsdominion.com. King's Dominion. It's amazing in here. Good morning, America. Breaking news, ABC News exclusive. President Trump's longtime personal attorney, Michael Cohen, now breaking his silence. The man who once said this... I'll do anything to protect Mr. Trump. ...now says he will put family and country first, contradicting the president's take on the Russia investigation and those FBI raids on Cohen's office. The strongest signal yet that he may cooperate with prosecutors against Trump. Only on GMA this morning. Summer scorcher. The new alert this morning, 60 million Americans bracing for more excessive heat. Roads buckling across the Midwest. How long will the heat wave last? Nightmare in paradise. A boat full of American tourists exploding in the Bahamas. Move the boat. Killing a woman, injuring at least nine others. The investigation this morning and what people on board are now saying. Closing in, the new video of rescue crews now getting closer to where that boys' soccer team might be. Trapped in this cave for more than a week, divers now using ropes to try to reach them as their classmates pray for their return. And King James gets a new throne. LeBron leaving behind Cleveland, taking his talent to Hollywood. Inside his massive $154 million deal, will he bring the Lakers the championship crown? The fans already celebrating right now. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And good morning, America. Hope you all had a good weekend. Welcome back to Michael and Cecilia. Welcome back. A lot of happiness in L.A. this morning. Yeah. A lot of happiness in L.A. It's good to be a Laker fan if you are. A lot of people haven't gotten signed up for the bandwagon. We're going to take a look at some Laker fans right there when they got the news. Doing LeBron's classic move, throwing some chalk into the air. And LeBron, he posted this clip on Instagram, thanking his hometown of Cleveland for an incredible Incredible four seasons, but now he has taken his talents to Los Angeles. Going to Cali. Oh, yeah. All right, but first, George, that big sit-down exclusive interview you had with the president's former attorney, Michael Cohen. He's breaking his silence. Yeah, first time since the FBI raided his offices back in April. This was quite a weekend, quite an interview. Let's set the stage first on who Michael Cohen is. Remember, he's the president's longtime personal attorney, also his political fixer. He's in the middle of a lot of complicated cases. That Stormy Daniels case, the porn star. He was negotiating for the Trump Tower in Moscow, and what he's always been is the loyalist loyalist for President Trump. Remember, he famously said he would take a bullet for President Trump. That's what appears to be changing right now. I've spent hours with him over the last several months, 45 minutes in a Manhattan hotel room on Saturday. He's very much now his own man. I wanted to get into some of the specifics. Yeah. Starting out with one of the big questions I asked him is, what will you do if prosecutors come to you and offer you leniency in return for information on President Trump? Now, he said he wanted to respect the process, didn't get into specifics, but he added this and he added this with emphasis. My wife, my daughter, and my son have my first loyalty and always will. I put family and country first. Nothing there about loyalty to President Trump. In fact, he didn't praise President Trump at all during that 45-minute interview. I followed up with him again. I said, but wait a second, Michael. You're facing the real prospect of having to choose between protecting your family and protecting President Trump. He says again, family is my first priority. Now, we should say here, again, Michael Cohen has not been charged with anything, yet he has not faced any charges, but he has hired a new attorney, and he did say, that he would be, uh, once he understands what charges might be filed against me, if any at all, I will defer to my counsel, Guy Petrillo, for guidance on future response. Now, this is important as well. Up until now, Michael Cohen has had different attorneys, and these are attorneys who've been part of a joint agreement with President Trump's attorneys. Once Guy Petrillo comes on board, that's expected to be at the end of this week, that joint agreement with President Trump's attorneys is going to end. That is a significant move. I did not give up this central question, though. Went back at Cohen a third time and said, wait a second, Michael. I've heard you say in the past you take a bullet for President Trump. I said, I've heard you say you'll always be loyal. You'll do anything to protect him. All he said in response, and he said this with emphasis, to be crystal clear, my wife, my daughter, and my son, and this country 
this country mm. have my first loyalty. That is a very, very different message from what we've seen from Michael Cohen uh, in the past. And Cecilia, one of the things I said to him after hearing all this and hearing him go on the record with this for the first time, I said, you know, there's a good chance that President Trump and his team are going to come after you. They're going to come after you hard. Because they had said he wouldn't flip. They, they had President said had said he, he did flip. not think he would flip. And this is where he also stiffened his spine. He actually visibly straightened up in his seat and then said this. I will not be a punching bag as part of anyone's defense strategy. I am not a villain in any story and won't allow others to try and depict me in that way. As I said, what we're seeing here is Michael Cohen as his own man. The Trump loyalist breaking his silence also seems to be breaking free in a real way. Why do you think he's doing this? Why is he sending a message to the president? Is he trying to cut a deal? Why is he doing this? Well, again, he says as, as far as cutting a deal, he respects the process of the prosecutors. And remember, he has not been charged with anything uh, yet. He's, in fact, he hasn't even talked uh, to the Mueller team, the Mueller investigators sending a signal to the president, sending a signal to the country, sending a signal to his family. And I think as he said in that last statement right there, he feels he's been portrayed as the villain in this story. He's been holding that inside and he wants to get it out. So he is under investigation by the feds here in Manhattan. They're looking into his business dealings, including likely that payment to Stormy Daniels, that now infamous payment. We know that they've seized four million files of 13, I believe, cell phones of his. But unlike President Trump, he doesn't have harsh words for the feds. Well, this was really interesting. Remember, the president and his allies have compared the FBI raid to his allies, at least, have compared it to stormtroopers. The president called it a witch hunt. Very, very different uh, message from Michael Cohen. He said, I don't agree with those who demonize or vilify the FBI. I respect the FBI as an institution as well as their agency. He said, in fact, when the FBI came to his hotel suite in the, at the Regency Hotel in Manhattan back in April, they were very courteous. They were very professional. And in fact, he said when they left, uh, he shook their hands. What's at issue here in the Southern District likely uh, is this non-disclosure agreement with Stormy Daniels, the porn star. Michael Michael Cohen made that payment, $130,000 payment uh, to Stormy Daniels in return for her silence. In the past, he's always said that he did this on his own initiative. So I asked him during this interview, did President Trump direct you to make that payment? Did he promise in advance uh, to, to reimburse you? Here's what he had to say. I want to answer. One day I will answer. But for now, I can't comment further on advice of my counsel. To me, that was a very, very big signal. Wow, exactly. He is also ensnarled in the questions about Russian meddling in the 2016 election. These two different investigations, Robert Mueller's investigation going alongside. He doesn't like the term witch hunt, he says. Say, again, disagrees with the president. He said, when I asked him, you know, he said, I said, the president is calling the Mueller investigation a witch hunt. He said, I don't like the term witch hunt. As an American, I repudiate any foreign government's attempt to interfere in our democratic process, and I would call on all Americans to do the same. And in fact, he went on further. Remember last week, President Trump put out a tweet on the Russian investigation where he said, well, President Putin said, has denied these allegations, something the president had said in the past. Michael Cohen took that on directly. Simply accepting Putin's denial is unsustainable. I choose to believe our intelligence agencies. Again, a major break from President Trump there. Now, I should say on the Mueller investigation, there have been a lot of allegations against Michael Cohen. Did he go to Prague to meet with Russians? Did he collude with Russians in any way? He absolutely denies that, says he didn't have anything to do with Russia, even though he was negotiating in the Trump Tower uh, in Moscow, and he's confident that Mueller will find that he did nothing wrong. Significantly, however, Robert Mueller's investigators have not yet reached out uh, to Michael Cohen and done an interview. I also asked him about that infamous Trump Tower meeting, remember back in June, June 2016, where members of the Trump campaign met with Russians. Don Jr. and yep. uh, Paul Manafort, mm -hmm. Jared Kushner, promising dirt on Hillary Clinton. He said he was not in that meeting. In fact, he wasn't part of the campaign, but he was in Trump Tower. And I asked him directly, did President Trump know about that meeting in advance? And here's what he had to say uh, uh, about that. He said it was something, again, he could not answer. This is something he would want to answer. Uh, in, a, in, a, in an official forum. So this was really, this was really remarkable here. Again, the questions he wouldn't answer. Really quickly, were you surprised at how direct and how strong his answers were? On that, on that stuff, again, he wouldn't go into specifics on the, uh, on the cases, but on how strong he was in declaring his loyalty to family and country first, not President Trump, 
very different message from we've heard in the past. Dan Abrams has been sitting here taking yeah. notes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. during yeah. this whole conversation. So what's your take on it? Well, this is, this is striking. Um, you don't do this interview and say these things unless you're looking for a possible deal uh, with the Southern District of New York. Remember, this is not the same office as Robert Mueller. Robert Mueller sent this case to the Southern District of New York. So in theory, this is an office that reports to Donald Trump. Um, and, and what I found so striking about, about your interview is the questions he would answer versus the questions he wouldn't answer. And the questions he would answer are the ones where it seems I think he feels safe, right? I, he's saying, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything exactly. Wrong. So, so he's, he's perfectly happy to talk about that. He's perfectly happy to talk about how kind he thought the FBI agents were, which is a sort of amazing statement. He's saying they're there raiding his office and he's saying how polite they were. Um, but he won't answer all the questions, which are the sorts of things that prosecutors are going to want to know answers to. And he's holding back o on those issues probably on advice of, of counsel, of course, but it is really striking to look at the difference there. And part of the, get into that, explain what's happening there. A lawyer would tell him, listen, you don't know if you're going to be charged with something, you don't know what you're going to be charged with, we can't give up the whole game right now. Which is, it's an interesting point that we're at right now as to how did we get here, right? Because, you know, prosecutors typically will, will, will say if they're, if they're charging someone, you know, okay, well, you know, is there anything you want to add? But he hasn't been charged yet. So we're now at this sort of, in this sort of purgatory where he hasn't been charged and yet it sure sounds like he's saying, but I've got information uh, for you if you are going to charge me. And remember, they've, they've collected so many documents over the last several well, weeks and, and months and, as well. And that raises another question, which is attorney-client privilege. Remember, he is not just Donald Trump's attorney. He is also Donald Trump's longtime business partner. And in matters where he was not serving his, his, his attorney, the attorney-client privilege would not apply. F final point, the significance of breaking this defense pact that he's been in with President Trump's attorneys. Well, that sends a clear signal, we're no longer in this together. This now says, I am no longer part of Donald Trump's team when it comes to this defense, because up to this point, they're sharing information, they're sharing documents, and that's now going to end. His lawyer is someone who was a leader in this office, this very office, Southern uh, the Southern District. He may have even hired some of the people who are working on this case. So very important also to think about who he's now hired as his lawyer. Big step over the weekend. Dan, thanks yeah. very much. We'll wait to see what the president has to say on this. We do want to turn now to that race to find a young soccer team missing in Thailand. They've been lost in a flooded cave for more than a week. But this morning, some hope. Rescue workers are closing in on an area where they think the boys might be. A diver just revealed they found writing on the wall of one of those passageways, which tells them they are going in the right direction. ABC's James Longman is on the scene for us this morning. Good morning, James. Good morning, Cecilia. This operation is in full swing, but it is a race against the weather. A further downpour is scheduled later in the week. They've got to get to that part of the cave they're hoping is still dry. Inside the battle to find 12 young boys and their soccer coach missing for over a week in this flooded Thai cave. Rescue divers pulling themselves along ropes deep inside, fighting against powerful currents. This morning, the country's elite naval unit further along the underground passages than they've ever been before. The plan to be able to reach this cavern, which rescuers think is above the water level and where they hope the team has sought refuge. Emergency teams from around the world, which in include the US military setting up a staging area in one of the cave chambers bringing in lights medical supplies and oxygen tanks rescuers have been working around the clock pumping thousands of gallons of water out of that cave so that they can get better access and find the group inside experts working from above the caves too this geologist telling us his team can scan 200 yards down into the earth, looking for gaps to knock through new entrances. The boys, aged 11 to 16, and their 25-year-old coach went into the cave after soccer practice last Saturday, their schoolmates praying for their safe return as an entire nation looks on in hope. This operation truly is massive, about a thousand people on this small patch of jungle and take a look, that is the entrance to the cave, that is where divers have been going in and we just spoke to one who told us that he found writing on the wall which tells them that they're going in the right direction but it is heavy going. He said that swimming through that water is like swimming through coffee, the visibility is that bad but all hope really is now pinned on finding 
that area in the cave, which is dry, where the group might be waiting. Michael? All right, thank you so much, James. We hope this story definitely has a happy ending. And now we're going to switch gears, and we're going to talk about the huge move for LeBron James. The king, he's taken his talents to Los Angeles, and ABC's Paula Ferris is here with all the details. Good morning, Paula. Good morning to you, Michael. And it was one of their greats, Magic Johnson, who came in and closed this deal, spending three hours with LeBron James at one of his L.A. homes over the weekend. It is official. LeBron is a Laker. After a frenzied weekend of fans scrutinizing his every move, King James finally made his decision. LeBron is a Laker. To spend the next four years playing for one of the most storied franchises in NBA history, the Los Angeles Lakers. This is a seismic shift in the league. The, the best player in the NBA going from the east to the west. The Lakers have 16 championships but haven't made the playoffs for the last five years. The city rejoicing with fans outside Staples Center participating in LeBron's signature pregame routine. LeBron thanking his hometown before departing on Instagram saying, thank you Northeast Ohio for an incredible four seasons. This will always be home. And Cleveland fans and the Cavaliers owner Dan Gilbert thanking him right back in a statement saying, LeBron, you came home and delivered the ultimate goal. Nothing but appreciation and gratitude for everything you put into every moment you spent in a Cavaliers uniform. This announcement was unusually low key for the three time NBA champ who turned his last two announcements into major media events. I'm going to take my talents to South Beach. I love you. I'm back. But the four year $154 million deal anything but ordinary. The LA Times reporting that Lakers legend Magic Johnson visited LeBron at his home in Los Angeles on Saturday night to help seal the deal. And former Laker Kobe Bryant tweeting, welcome to the family, King James. So LeBron made it very clear this was going to be a family decision. He has two homes and a production company in LA. And you guys, he leaves Cleveland on much better terms this time around, you heard from the Cavs owner in that piece. He also said he looks forward to retiring LeBron's jersey Helps to down have the road. Championship. Yeah. It really does. Yeah, Sorry, when, George. When you, winning, winning, <laughs> winning healed all, without a doubt. It certainly it does. But he, he went back home and he won a championship. And, and it's a business. Sports is a business. Mm -hmm. And um, for these guys, you have to do what's best for your family, which is something that he did. And we all wish him the best in L.A. And he's not going to leave Cleveland behind for sure. He's, of course. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. He's a big house there, too. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be hot in Cali with him there. It, that scorching heat for millions of Americans here. Temperatures topping 90 degrees for much of the country. Ginger's outside with all the latest. Hey, Ginger. Oh, good morning, Cecilia. I love it. I'm just one of those people that likes the heat. Y'all like it, all right? All right. 81 degrees in Times Square this morning. Feels like 84. We did not drop below 80. I want to show you what it looks like when you put a thermal gum to the concrete and the asphalt. This is why you don't let pets walk on it for long. 130 degrees. That was just one spot. And then we put a, a thermometer in a car. This thing went up 40 degrees in less than 20 minutes. Another reason why you've got to really not, you can't even just say it's only going to be a couple of minutes I'm going to be inside. This is going to happen for days on end. We've already seen it for three, four days. The numbers 105 Washington, D.C., 100 Burlington, Vermont, and a quick look at what's happening the next four days or so. If we stay above 90 in New York City, all the way through Friday. It'll be the longest stretch, a one in 33 year event. All right, let's get to the select cities now, brought to you by CarMax. At CarMax, we'll buy your car even if you don't buy one from us, because maybe you're already buying a car somewhere else, or maybe you want to shop around, or maybe you don't want to drive a car at all anymore. Like maybe you want to ride a camel into the desert and take a deep, hard look within. Just figure some stuff out for a while. That's cool. Whatever your plans for buying a car, CarMax is the place to sell your car. Okay, let's do this, Tina. Here we go. I believe in you, Tina. Come on now. Ah, we could just hang out. Doing anything outdoors today, you really need to take it easy. Our temperatures will be rising very quickly. By lunchtime today, we'll be at 93 with heat index readings by lunchtime in the triple digits. In fact, all day long, quite oppressive with high heat uh, values and high humidity. Now, for the 4th of July right now, it's looking like it's going to be overall dry by fireworks time. Temperatures will come down out of that 90 degree range to 80 degrees. And then the remainder of the work week, not quite as high on Friday.
Coming up, a deadly tour boat explosion in the Bahamas killed an American woman, injured at least nine others. We're going to have more on the investigation and what witnesses are saying now. And a stunning escape, a prisoner breaking free with the help of a helicopter. The urgent manhunt right now. This is your wake-up call. If you have moderate to severe...